Hey everybody, welcome back to another craft break. My name is Emma Panuski, and we are going to be crafting a very inexpensive, super fun to do Halloween craft um, with Apple Barrel. So I am really excited to walk you guys through this one today. We're gonna be making these little DIY tombstones, and the most fabulous thing about this craft is that you probably have all of the supplies at home. I know a lot of times crafters will tell you that you have all the supplies at home, but I really think that you will for this craft. All you need is a cereal box, uh, some type of newsprint, newspaper, even tissue paper would work honestly, um, some uh, disposable plastic shopping bags, your Mod Podge and your Apple Barrel paint and you are good to go. So I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how to turn this into this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly what you'll need to know to make one of these for yourself. Um, and then of course the best part is that you can customize it, make it look very spooky. Um, you can stencil on top with, um, you know, rest in peace, whatever you wanna put on your tombstone. And then I'll give you guys some painting techniques to make it look a little bit more like real stone and how to create some of this moss texture. Okay, so first things first, I have my cereal box. Um, I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of paper because I want to get a pretty symmetrical arch going on um, to create the top of my tombstone. So I'm kind of kind of, I can see through my paper a little bit, so I can kind of mark in the middle, just a dot in the middle. Um, and I'm gonna make an arch going up here and then kind of falling down. See, kind of falling down there. Okay, so now Taking my scissors, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that curve. So that now we have our center point and I'm gonna be able to mark exactly where I need to cut on my cereal box. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over. And this is why we made this little template. We're gonna mark that in the center and we're gonna trace it again. Ta-da! Okay, so before you get to cutting, I just wanna give you guys a few tips to make this work really well. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start by cutting at the edge here. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit down. Start on the other side. And I'm just cutting on the corner, okay? So we have like this flap. Once you have that flap, we're gonna leave the sides. Don't do anything with those just yet but we're gonna go ahead and cut out our curve. So we're just following that line that we made with our template. That part's off. Do the same thing on the other side. So it looks a little crazy right now. Flip it around, we're gonna do the same thing. So right at the edge here, we're gonna make that cut, just a straight line down. And a little bit further too, that won't hurt. If you go a little bit further than you marked your line. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut out this arch. On the other side. Okay. 
Oh, I do want to say, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, Caitlin is with us. So if you have any questions or any comments throughout our little demo today, make sure to list them. Okay, so the reason that we have these flaps is because they're going to kind of act as support for our tombstone, okay? So um, we're going to take some masking tape, and I'm just going to start by cutting out like a three-inch strip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to face this way. So I'm going to take my tape, so the sticky side towards you guys, and I'm going to line it up here so that when I lay this flap down, it catches the sticky side of the tape. And so now it's kind of on there, okay? So it's not really secure, but that's why we're gonna Mod Podge with paper on top. And essentially, we are creating kind of like a paper mache with our Mod Podge. I'm just really creating a really dur uh, d dirty, durable, sturdy project. Um, and one of my favorite things actually too about this project is that first of all, it is so inexpensive to make. If you have a cereal box and you know tape and Mod Podge newspaper, you're good to go. Um, but another thing is that you can make a project like this and then keep it as decoration in your home. This would look so cute in um, like a little mud room or um, on your uh, shelves for Halloween but I chose to use Apple Barrel multi-surface paint because um, it's really durable, obviously, but it's indoor-outdoor safe. So if you did want to put this under like a covered um, porch or patio outside your home, you could totally do that. And for a little bit more added durability, you could even seal this with Mod Podge Outdoor if you wanted to place it a little bit closer to the elements. So before we do the next side, I have some newsprint. So this is just um, some paper that I've been saving. You know when you go to your craft store and you buy like glass or ceramic, they wrap it in this paper. So I've, I just like to save this because you never know when you're gonna need a random thing until you need that random thing. And today we do. So hooray, grab your uh, newspaper that you've been hoarding. So I'm just kind of crumpling it up. I don't want it to be too wide, but just kind of like this. And we're actually going to stick it inside our cereal box because it makes it so much easier to craft with later on now that we actually have something substantial inside. Otherwise, when we're painting, it's gonna push into our cardboard and it's just not gonna be as durable. So this really just um, adds to the durability of this project. But you can really use, like I'm using this um, paper right here, but you could use, um, I've used plastic shopping bags before, that works really well. Any of that sort of thing that you could use to fluff, fluff an object. Okay, I think we're, we're gonna get away with only needing to do one more. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we don't want it to be too wide where it's like bul you know, bulbous, but we still want it to be flat, but we just want to have a little bit more durability there. Okay, so once you stuff it, I'm going to take my masking tape. I'm reminding you guys how to do that. So the sticky side is facing towards you guys. That way, when I um, lay my other flap down, it catches the sticky side and it holds. Now my other side is getting loose, but that's why our project doesn't end here because it wouldn't be very durable if it did. I'm just gonna secure that back into place. Okay. So I'll let you guys know, this next step is optional. Um, I just did it because I just wanted to have a little bit more um, security while my Mod Podge was drying. But once your Mod Podge dries, you really are creating like a paper mache effect. So you don't need to do this step, but it'll just give you peace of mind while your Mod Podge is drying and while you're actually doing the paper mache part of this, if that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take strips of masking tape and we're going to lay them down a along the entire arch 
of our cereal box. So I'm, I'm overlapping some, I'm layering. Um, I wanna make sure that I see blue everywhere or whatever color your masking or painter's tape is. But when I'm done with a little bit of TV magic, we're gonna have something that looks like this, okay? So, um, and isn't that cute too? This is a smaller cereal box, so we get kind of a smaller tombstone. If you get a family-sized cereal box, you'll have a bigger tombstone. Um, and if you are not a cereal eater, don't worry. You can use really any kind of cardboard food packaging box that you have at home, like a granola bar box or a pasta box even, um, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be a cereal box. I just know that a lot of people have them. So that's why I used it. But um, Okay, so we're ready to get into the fun part now. Now that we have masked down our arch here, I have some newspaper. I like to keep up with my finances, what's going on in the business world. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, if you don't get a newspaper anymore, um, your local gas station a lot of times will have um, newspapers that you can buy, uh, a lot of local newspapers sometimes, uh, or a lot of local, um, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. A lot of local newspapers will give their city newspapers out for free. Um, maybe. Grandma has some newspapers that you could borrow from her house. Um, but newspapers aren't that hard to find if you are not already subscribed to one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut thin strips of my newspaper. And when I say thin, I should get a little bit more specific, huh? Like an inch and a half long, or wide, I'm sorry. We don't want it to be too long, but honestly, the length of the strips doesn't really matter that much. Um, also, another good thing to point out is that truly you can use any formula of Mod Podge for, to achieve this paper mache effect. I use Mod Podge gloss because I think that Mod Podge gloss might be the stickiest out of all the different Mod Podge formulas, and I really wanna have a good hold on my, excuse me, tombstone, but now that I've done this a lot of times, you can use Mod Podge matte, gloss, satin, we've tested them, and they all work just fine. So it's, it's really up to you and what you want to, um, what you have or your favorite sheen so that you can use it again because we are gonna be painting on top of it. So ultimately you won't really see that much of the sheen when you're done. Okay, so just cutting these strips a little bit more. And I'll just show you guys a couple of these. So, now I'm gonna take my Mod Podge, but again, you can use whatever formula you like. That's when your excess paper comes in handy. Okay, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge brush. I'm gonna dip it directly into my Mod Podge. And I'm going to paint on a pretty generous layer of Mod Podge. This is where you don't want to be skimpy with your Mod Podge. Um, the more the merrier, honestly, for this. I'm going to place it down, kind of smooth it out with my fingers. I will say this is a really fun one to do with the kids. They will have a super fun time because it does get a little bit messy. Um, they can, you know, have fun writing clever sayings on their tombstone. They can decorate their tombstone however they like. Um, this is a really fun family activity. Okay, so what we ultimately want to do is we're just layering our strips of Mod Podge down. It doesn't have to be an absolute masterpiece. Um, that's another one of the great things about this project is it, you want it to look organic in the end. So if it's a little bit bumpy, if it's a little bit wrinkly, that's really the beauty of creating a paper mache project like this. So again, I'm just layering, layering until every single inch of my tombstone 
is, um, has paper on it, has newspaper on it. Um, and so once you go ahead and you place all of your different strips of newspaper onto your cereal box, you're gonna let it dry a little bit. And then what I want you to do is go ahead and give those strips another fairly generous coat of Mod Podge so that you will be ready for our next step. Um, so once you're done, your cereal box will look like this. Um, a lot different looking than this, but that's the transformation that it makes. It is so cool, um, and look, I mean, it's just really, really sturdy. Um, you can throw this thing around and it's not gonna budge. So yeah, it's really cool to paper mache with Mod Podge. Um, I'm showing you how to do it now, of course, with the cereal box, but the, the ideas are really endless. There's so many fun things that you can do with um, paper mache technique with Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys really quick how to apply um, a stone pattern using some apple barrel paint. And I think the only thing I forgot was a plate to put my paint on. So Caitlin's gonna grab me a plate really quick um, and then I'll show you guys how exactly to do the stone pattern. It's super, super simple. And once we're done, we will end up, of course, with a really rustic, weathered, and worn looking tombstone, like our finished project here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. Awesome. Okay, so what I'm gonna first put on my color palette are two kind of um, darker, medium dark tones of gray. So I'm working with my multi-surface apple barrel timeless gray and my apple barrel multi-surface dark granite. Okay, I'm gonna take my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm gonna start off with my lighter color of gray. I'm going to start painting. You can see how beautifully it brushes on, too. Um, just a little swatch right there. And I'm going to take my 12, my number 12 flat, and I'm not putting quite as much paint on this brush, but I'm doing kind of a slip slapping technique in here all over that wet um, light gray paint. And I'm just kind of subtly introducing that darker gray. So that when we go back in with our gray dry brush, we just have some, looks textured, looks a little bit worn. Um, you kind of get that stone effect. So I'll show you guys it again in this little patch down here. Using two different brushes just to be clear. So now I'm introducing some of that darker gray. Going in all different directions, making X's kind of. Then going in with my light gray brush, softening that up a little bit. And then you are left with that pattern. So let's go ahead and finish the rest of this box. Again, introducing that darker gray. Then going back in with a drier brush, with our light gray brush, and just softly kind of blending it out, making it look a little bit more subtle. Okay, 
So it looks a little bit like stone. So one last thing that I'm gonna do, oops. I'm gonna take my lightest gray that we have not used yet. This is granite gray. I'm gonna squeeze a little dollop of this onto my palette and taking some fresh water. Um, it doesn't really matter what size brush you use. I'm just gonna use a small flat brush. I'm taking some clean tap water and introducing some of that water into my granite gray. Just with my brush here. Okay, so now with some damp granite gray on my brush, I'm gonna hold my, uh, my loaded paintbrush in my right hand, and I'm gonna take just a blank paintbrush in my left hand. Um, with my right paintbrush, sorry, with my right paintbrush, um, oh, now I can't tell my left from my right. With my right paintbrush over my left paintbrush, I'm gonna tap on the paintbrush beneath it. Get more paint, more water if you need it. Now we're cooking. We're left with a splatter effect, which I think just adds to the kind of granite look of a natural looking tombstone. So I think that's cool. Makes it look a little bit more stony. It's looking good. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brushes. Um, and then one last thing I want to show you guys, um, just a great way that I have found to achieve kind of like a faux moss look. So I'm going to add a little bit of my true green onto my palette. Um, we actually sell these really great little um, sponge sets. They have these little natural sponges in them, which is what I'm going to be using today, actually. I'm going to take one of my little sponges. I'm going to dip it in my green. And then I'm gonna offload quite a bit from that. And then at the edges here, I'm just gonna introduce a little bit of my green. And so um, you can wait for your gray to dry, but honestly, because our gray is a little bit damp, I feel like the green goes on to it a little bit more subtly and it looks a little bit more natural. So anywhere you want it to look like your tombstone is moss ridden, you can dab um, your sponge there. And again, I have very little paint on my brush. That's important for this technique. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. Uh, and then you go ahead and you hand letter or you stencil your phrase. Um, and you have a really cute, really easy, really cheap, um, DIY tombstone right in time for Halloween. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to buy um, any of the Apple Barrel or Mod Podge product that you saw, you can find it on platonline.com. Thank you guys so much for being with us.